Okay, then we can start. Hello and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today for the workshop and spending your lunch time with us. Uh, my name is Puria Amini. I'm a CEO and co-founder of RiskClick, the company behind the DetoClick solution, which is the novel automated, reliable, and explainable deduplication solution. Uh, first, we go to the agenda. For today, uh, the agenda, the first part of the agenda uh, is regarding the introduction to automated search deduplication. Uh, the first functionality that we develop uh, and then we publish the paper will be presented by Doris and Beatrice. Doris and Beatrice are a highly experienced information specialist at the University of the Bern. And uh, the whole project came from their pain and started from there when we were discussing during the coffee break that they had a lot of work. And this is really time consuming task that if we can develop any solution and the collaboration started from there and then we can we could develop uh, that click together and still uh, enjoying the collaboration with the, uh, with them. And uh, this is a great collaboration we enjoyed a lot and enjoy then uh, I will show you the new functionality of DeduClick which is the automated update search deduplication and then uh, show you a live demo uh, and the result then I will hand over to Jose Jose is also I mean, he will, he can introduce himself better, but uh, he is the information specialist at the World Health Organization and co-founder of the COVID-19 database, which I, most of us uh, were using and maybe still using the database. And uh, he will talk about the uh, uh, the challenges they had uh, to to create the, the database to keep the database update and especially regarding the, the duplication and uh, um, discuss about the, the, the collaboration that we had to overcome these uh, challenges and how they do it currently. Then uh, I will show you the the, the 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 other new feature which is the automated database deduplication uh in the system and uh, shortly walk you through the organization management tool which is a management tool for an organization to manage their activity within the organization regarding creating user paying was and all this activity regarding the duplication and using the duplicate tool then uh, we have time for the Q&A. Uh, please, uh, if you have any question, uh, please uh, send it in a chat and my colleague will help us to collect the question. And at the end, uh, I will ask the question from the expert panel. With that, uh, we go to the first part of the presentation and I would like to hand over to, to Beatrice and the floor is yours. Thank you, Puria. Um, shortly to my person, um, I'm working at the Public Health Library of the University of Bern, and together with Doris, and I have an experience of more than 15 years in systematic review searching. I'm quasi a, quasi a fossil in this, um, in this topic. Okay. For this um, uh, presentation, I have uh, created a small EndNote library first. And what you can see is uh, that there are a lot of sources um, where we have searched. You can see, um, for example, a preprint server, MedArchive, or you can see the clinical trial registries, um, Google Scholar, and um, the rest is the classical um, bibliographic databases. And so um, the data set is not very big for a public health uh, literature search, but um, it was a very um, 
concise questions and we expect quite a lot of duplicate records. Our starting point, our first step is always to um, um, export all records from a reference management tool. We here use EndNote 20 and therefore we export an RIS file. We save as a type a txt file and choose an um, output style um, RIS. That's um, what I have done beforehand. And now um, we will uh, change and go live to DeduClick, where I can show you how easy it is to upload the RIS file, wait a bit, drink a coffee, and then um, download the deduplicated results. You should see now um, the nice website of DedoClick. And by the way, um, what we are showing you today is what nicely um, presented uh, in video tutorials directly of the website. And um, the rest of the presentation will also be shared to the audience. I think Puria will mention it then, how he will distribute it. You will find a data click uh, below um, systematic reviews. And here is the screen where you can upload your files. You can uh, drag and drop either a zipped file, a TXT file, or an RIS file. This is the um, TXT file. And when I have a large file, more than 10 megabytes, then I usually zip it. This is uh, quickly done. I add then a zip folder to upload it because this is better for the per performance of DedoClick. Um, DedoClick offers a um, maximum size of 200 megabytes, which is really huge. I think um, we rarely go over 20 megabytes for our public health um, searches. Now we get the message that the file has been successfully uploaded, that the deduplication process has started, and we can check the status by switching on results. And you see here, um, DedoClick is working now. And um, I would like to go quickly back to the presentation and let DedoClick work um, one, two minutes. And to tell you something um, just behind uh, DedoClick. Oh, I have to yeah, stop sharing. If you just <laughs> stop sharing, then I can share this. Yes, thank, thank you, Puria. Welcome. Okay. Yes. So, um, as you know, um, searching uh, multiple databases for an evidence synthesis um, ends up with uh, overlapping records. And we thought um, it's very important uh, to discuss with you or to show you what actually we define as a duplicate record. For us, um, we say that any two or more references having identical bi bibliographic information is seen as a duplicate record. Now, um, bibliographic information can differ depending on the type of reference. Most often, um, we search journal articles, and therefore the bibliographic data include author names, article title, journal name, year of publication, volume issue, pages number, and the DOI or PubMed ID may also be counted as bibliographic information. The process of removing duplicate records is very important for the quality of an evidence synthesis, but um, it is a laborious, time-consuming and very complex process. Um, 
the reason why when we started um, the duplication manually we used a 12-step uh, procedure i think that most of you agree that you would um, start the duplication by comparing fields uh, the first step uh, comp compares quite a lot of uh, fields, author, year, title, journal, volume, issue, pages. And if two records or more match those fields, then we delete without checking. But soon, starting at step three, when we lower the criteria, some checking might be helpful if um, the data are not complete. And then the more we lower the criteria, the more eye checking is important. Then we check uh, for false duplicates. We use the DOI or, or try to find page numbers. So um, it, it is really um, hard work, I would say, for librarians. It's always at the end of a project and if you imagine having 12,000 references in an EndNote library, you go to this process, it's sometimes also a bit error prone because you get tired, you are under pressure. And the problem is if at step seven, I make a mistake, I delete uh, erroneously some records, I have never found out how to undo a step and either you try hard to recover the records or then you start from scratch. This was the point um, three years ago. And then um, we met uh, Nikolai Borisov, the first author of the publication. And he told us that exactly such a rep repetitive process is good for um, machine learning. Machine learning um, or a, an algorithm uh, is as good at, as is, it has been trained. And um, we had to um, go forward and also train very um, tricky cases from real life. For example, um, uh, the references differ in their metadata. It's clear with author names, pagination, and journals. We have to normalize this data, but there are other tricky cases. For example, um, Cochrane sometimes uses suffixes in their journal names. Other databases won't. We have um, special characters. Or the last case is very tricky, where Embase would index um, an article by its English version with the English um, journal name, whereas Medline indexes the original Chinese article with the Chinese title, journal title. And um, this um, metadata is so um, different that for the algorithm, it's very difficult to find out that it's a true duplicate because human beings, what they do, they open the PDF and they look at it and then they see it and choose which version they would like to have. So the message is for data click, we, um, we have defined um, a conservative um, algorithm not to remove false positive duplicates because um, this might um, then uh, remove an eligible study and could, could introduce bias. Okay, then I go back to um, dedo click. Now um, you can see that the project has finished, status complete. This was my search and the original data is stored here. And we click now on download under deduplicated file. You can open the zip. And I would like to start with the nice um, flowchart um, data click generates. Can you see that? It's a bit uh, small. Okay. Um, this flowchart represents the references uh, distribution before the duplication and its results and after the duplication. What you can see um, here is um, that there is a circle named others. 
So um, most of the databases had been recognized by DedoClick. The one source, MedArchive, is not yet listed in the list of sources um, of um, DedoClick. This is customizable. I could send now a message to uh, the support team and ask them to add MedArchive as a new database. Then what you can also see that two circles have been removed um, because uh, the Cochrane reviews, they have been found by Medline and the Cochrane central um, trials were published trials also found by Embase and Medline. So that click would not um, uh, add bullets where there is the number equal zero. Uh, the Ditto Click team worked very hard to um, make possible such a nice uh, flowchart. It is actually not mandatory for the Prisma flowchart to have uh, this, this part here. Um, but uh, we have learned from colleagues that some make a research on, on um, their findings. findings. They um, uh, make research on evidence summary tables, and it could be a benefit to have um, records after the duplication. Please, uh, if I am um, too fast or so, please uh, just write in the chat or ask questions. Now, um, the next um, slide is uh, the duplicate re report. Maybe I can make it a bit bigger, sorry. A very nice and transparent report where you can see um, which um, records have been kept and which ones have been removed. Starting from here, those are all um, duplicate, uh, uh, are the same references. And you can see that um, uh, Web of Science has been removed, PubMed kept. In the next step, um, uh, PubMed was removed and Medline's kept, and here uh, Medline is ranked over Embase record. In the end, it's the Medline record that was retained as the unique um, record. So um, it is based on a hierarchy, how we define which databases are ranked higher. Google Scholar is very low, and um, this is our way of um, ranking databases, uh, my colleague will tell you more afterwards. This is also customizable. Here is a folder containing all duplicate records as an RIS file. And the most exciting folder is this one here. When you open it, then you have an RIS file containing now the unique records after the duplication. We usually send this file directly to the researchers for an upload into Rayon or whatever um, program they use, or the other way, we re-import it in a new EndNote library and then uh, send to the research teams a compressed EndNote, EndNote library um, with those results. And with this, I stop sharing from here. And I think I hand over to Puya again. Yes, I think you see my screen. Yes. Then uh, I would like to invite Doris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, okay, uh, um, my name is Doris. Uh, I work together with Beatrice as an information specialist at the Public Health Library at the University of Bern. And um, what I just want to add shortly to uh, what Beatrice has already um, shown or, or told is that the data quality uh, is quite important also for DataClick. So DataClick can only process what it is fed. So this means, you know, uh, what is in the RIS file that you upload to DataClick uh, will be deduplicated and you will get the result as an RIS file again. And then, um, you know, um, if you just click once more, um, Puria. And then you see that, you know, if you import uh, um, 
bibliographic data that are crap, then um, DataClick can normalize uh, what is there and and give you try to give you a, a, a good result. But it would be much better if um, if the data that come into DataClick are already kind of um, maybe uh, from good databases or if um, they are not from good databases that um, try to have databases with as much information as possible. Uh, so, you know, the, pro the principle garbage in, garbage out. So what we can do to make the process or, or after all the, um, the flowchart um, really good quality um, is that we add the database names. And I just want to show you how, um, what I mean with that. So if you can just um, stop sharing and then I share an EndNote library for you to see uh, what I mean. So can you all see the EndNote library? Yeah? Okay. Yes, we can see. Thank you. So what I mean is, um, you know, normally we um, import uh, from different databases, like here you can see from BioScience, Medline, Ovid, Google Scholar, Embase, uh, and Cochrane. And then we make groups um, so that we can see, you know, how many results we had from each database. Um, th this is just a small one now because I just wanted to show you um, something um, that's normally um, happening. So if I look at the day, uh, the Embase uh, records, then you can see, oh, great, name of database, Embase has, um, it's from Embase, and it comes directly uh, from the import. Uh, but the problem is then you see these Medline um, records, and this is because Embase has um, Embase unique records and Medline records. So what happens now with the flowchart, if I just leave it like it is, um, you know, in the end, when you, uh, after the duplication, uh, there uh, might be a mix up between Medline uh, unique and, and Embase unique. And then also coming from Medline Ovid, you see they have it in capitals, the Medline. So uh, this would be a little bit confusing um, I suppose. And uh, for example, Web of Science does not deliver a name of database and, and Google Scholar either. So what you can do here is you can just um, add the name of database if you want to have a clean uh, um, flowchart afterwards. And this is very easy. You just take one group, you, you click in, into the group so that the machine knows which group is active. And then you go here to library and then to change, move, copy fields. And here you can see that uh, you can select actually the field name of database down here. And I hope it's big enough for you to see. And then replace that field, which is right now empty with uh, the name of the database. So this would be Google Scholar. And then you just click OK. That's all you need. And it, then it tells you that 177 references will be changed. And you can see that it's 177. So you can just go on OK, and then it will change the fields uh, very quickly. And then it has made the changes. And then the name of database field is filled. And um, with that, um you you can then uh make the ris file upload to data click and then you will have a really nice result for the flowchart but of course if you don't need the flowchart you don't need to do that so i uh, i stop share to get back to the presentation thank you very much uh i believe that you see the presentation again uh, just go one back. I just wanted to add, add something. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there's a step-by-step -step manual if you uh, uh, make a picture of that um, um, let's QR, see, code. QR code. <laughs> and uh, so um, you, you will see then a PDF 
with the instructions. Um, just to let you know, there is actually an automatic source detection as a new feature in DedoClick. So um, DedoClick has tried to get this information uh, of where a data um, uh, a data set comes from, um, from the URL or from any other field, you know, when the field of database is empty. And it, it works quite well, but not for all databases. So uh, this is something in the making. Okay, that's that's all from me. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much for the nice presentation and nice demo. Uh, just to add what uh, Doris mentioned, this is the, the priority or order of the databases that we have currently in the solution that start from Medline and base means that as uh, Beatrice nicely mentioned uh, and showed that uh, if you have two records from Medline and Embase, this the algorithm automatically prioritizes medline and keep the medline and remove the embase but this order is customizable for example for our uh, colleagues in Basel they would like to prioritize embase over medline that we could do it and for them is really personalized and tailor med and they, they can sit and with that, um, I would like also to show you the the new functionality of the uh, update search the duplication. I think you still see my old screen. Uh, let me see. Uh, stop share and share again. Just a second. Oh. This is put it back. Do you see the panel now? Yes? Yeah, OK, perfect. Yes, uh, then I would like to show you the new functionality uh, that we have um, for the um, for the data click, which is the update search the duplication means that uh, once uh, when you do your initial search, you deduplicate and you have the result, but sometimes you need to, to update your systematic review or um, um, database. And then you need to uh, deduplicate the newly found records. And this is the functionality that we develop and would like to present to you. First, how you do it for your uh, systematic review. Uh, for a small data set and uh, which are less than 200 megabyte and then you have uh, less than 100,000 citations in the file. Uh, first, you need to uh, create a project because this is the first time that the system realized that's a new project and this is only you do it once at the beginning of the project and then for any further update the system automatically recognize that this project already exists and take the latest updated file of the project as a a starting point and then recognize the new update and use the new update for the duplication. Then uh, here um, you just give a name to the project and choose the small size, then you can go next. Again, the same activity, then you just drag and drop your file here the same file size at the normal search the duplication that Beatrice mentioned, zip, txt, and RIS, and then you can submit. Then you get a message that the file has been up successfully uploaded. You can go to the result and uh, you will see shortly the result here while is running and deduplicating the initial file i will go back again to my presentation and show you the uh, the validation result how did we validate the, the algorithm and model and what was the result of the validation Oh, 
Okay. Um, first, what is behind the deduplicate? How the algorithm and model works? This is a step-by-step -step process. The first step, of course, is a metadata normalization. The automatic recognition of the source, normalize uh, the title, author, journal, DOI, URL, unify the language by translating the language from non-English language to English, and uh, as I said, the automatic source detection. And so far, we have 25 sources. If you realize that there is a source that the DeduClick didn't detect, please uh, send us an email to the support team. We can uh, easily add it to, to our list least. Then the second step is that uh, the, the, the algorithm uh, works based on the similarity score with the Levenstein distance model. I don't want to go to the detail and also apply the rule-based validation with a 12-step, the manual 12-step that uh, Beatrice shows at the beginning of the presentation when they were doing manually. Then the third step is to generate the file and reports, the file and report that Beatrice showed you already. How we uh, validated the, the model and the performance uh, as it described in the, our paper, uh, we picked eight heterogeneous data sets that they have a mix of the clinical trial publication, or uh, they have only the clinical trial or publication. The size of these data sets varies between from 45 to 18,000 number of references. And uh, we got this uh, validation data set or test data set from two different groups of experts at the University of Bern. And then we compare the performance of um, the, the human deduplication versus the deduclic deduplication. Before to show you the result, uh, to just clarify some uh, terminology that I will show you in the next slide, is that first, uh, what we cor the correctly identify unique count as a true negative, and the correctly identified duplicate count as a true positive, because at the end, the task of model was to detect duplicates, and if detect duplicate, we count it as a true positive. But incorrect identify unique Call, um, called as a false negative, and incorrect identified duplicate called as a false positive. And these false positive are the dangerous one, because if any system or if manually we have false positive, we recognize as a duplicate and we remove, maybe this is very important eligible uh, record for our review and then we accidentally remove it. Therefore, that was the first priority for us, not having any false positive. Uh, going to the results, as you can see, uh, comparing to the expert, uh, the experts said uh, they had 11 uh, false positive, means that accidentally remove some uh, references, uh, which were not duplicate, but deduclick we had zero. And therefore, from there, we calculated the recall precision and F1 score. Recall uh, is the ratio of the correctly identified duplicates. As you can see from here, from the expert, 88% of duplicate could be identify, but with a deduclick 99.5, means that still we have 0.5% duplicate in the data set. When we look at the precision, which is the ratio of the correctly identified unique, this is important because since we didn't have any false positive in the deduclick, the precision is 100%. But uh, the experts, since they had 
11 uh, false positive, the precision is 99.95%. Uh, and the F1 score is the harmonic means of the recall and precision in a simple term, how many times a model made a correct prediction across the entire data set, which for deduclick was 99.75% and for expert 91, 98%. And of course, when we compare the time used by the expert, we see the huge uh, time saving, which is also correlate to the money saving uh, for the organization and for the experts. Then I will stop here. I will go back again to the solution. I think this is done to see our result for the update search. Here you see the initial file, the duplication already completed. And even you can uh, download the, the duplicated file and original file and contain the same file as uh, Beatrice uh, already showed you. Then now in this, the first step, we already deduplicated our initial file and create a project. Now we need to go back again to the update search deduplication. And this time we just select the existing project because I already created that project. And then you get a pop-up that uh, tell you that the latest deduplicated project file will be considered as an initial file automatically by the system. Then you press OK. And this time you need just to select the project that you already created. In this case was Evopax that I create. You keep it on a small size because the big size when I will show you uh, in the next part of the presentation is for the databases. Then you go next. And then here you just upload your updated file and you submit. Then uh, you get a pop-up, you go to the result and it's the same process takes some minutes until you get the result. To, to save the time, I will go back again to the presentation to show you one slide and then we go back, get the result and then I show you what we get as an output from the update search, the duplication. Uh, when we were creating the, the solution with Doris and Beatrice, what was the point that was really important for us to, to, to create a solution? Was first to be reliable, not to have a false positive. Means that uh, as an expert that you can rely on a solution that you can just drag and drop and then ensure you that doesn't remove any uh, incorrect or any unique record and be validated means validated by the as I show you that we did the validation and the solution is more than two years in a use and uh, we validating more and more by 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 the users to be transparent uh, means that we understand how it works and then we can check, we can trace the activity, we can double check. And if we have a question, we can be able to trace uh, the, the activity of the tool. Because as uh, you might know, one of the challenges that the AI uh, community in general are facing is that the AI is a black box. Of course, it gives you a nice result, but it still is a black box. You don't understand what is happening inside the black box. What we try to do, we try to open this black box and then uh, be transparent, easy to use. Anybody can use it because um, we had a very nice discussion and the Dutch deduplication date on the topic, who should deduplicate? Is it a librarian task or is it a research task? And in our opinion, it should be a solution anybody can do it and depends on the size of organization, type of organization and collaboration and so on. 
time saving not to make your process more complex <laughs> make it easier customizable that can be adaptive for any type of organization scalable can do from small size to big databases will Jose will talk about it in the next part of the presentation and doesn't change anything in the data preserve the metadata as we feed into the system we get it back uh then i think this is done our update search the duplication is done we can go and get our results going back to the result as you can see uh it's done the status is completed uh you can download the result here here as you can see the result in the result uh you get the the csv file of the diff means the diff is a difference unique record from the uh, initial to the updated one basically the new unique records uh, you get it also in the ris format you get again the uh, the flow chart uh, as uh, beatrice showed you the flow chart in the csv format and also the report in a CSV and HTML format. The reason is that the report here is mainly in HTML and CSV format because when you have a big database, it's really even hard for the Acrobat reader to open a big file and then you can do it. That's why we made it in the HTML and uh, CSV format. And uh, then, from here, I will stop and I would like to hand over to Jose uh, to introduce yourself and uh, show us your interesting project. Yeah, hello, everybody. I'm Jose Luis Garnica Areño from the WHO Library, World Health Organization. And I'm now representing uh, the team who was working on this uh, big project. And as you, as I, it's mentioned there, I'm the uh, one of the co-founders of the WHO COVID-19 database. And I'm going to tell you why I'm considered one of the co-founders. It sounds like a big title, but it isn't simply, it isn't that, but I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to go through the story of the WHO COVID-19 database very briefly, and then representing my, my team, um, our team, I'm going to, to show you how useful um, DeduClick has been in our um, workflow, in our process. So let me start sharing my screen. I need to turn my camera off. And then... If I have the right to share my screen now. Oh, yeah, now yes. Please let me know if you see my screen now where the presentation is, okay. Yes, we can see. Okay, good, and there now. So uh, the WHO COVID-19 research database is uh, behind the scenes of a super powerful tool. And how was the, how was this database born? Well, I was re I remember I was in, in the library with my, uh, my dear friend, Thomas Allen, who passed away last year. And we were there and we used to be called the library guys. So the thing is that our, our um, library room was considered one of the laboratories of the uh, of the organization in headquarters in Geneva. Why? Because they usually came to ask for ideas. Uh, they brought their ideas, and our let's say role was to make them happen. So we were there, and one day um, we were in charge of. Um, like trying to look for solutions to distribute sort of bibliographies uh, because the COVID-19 started. So it was in January 2020 when we started working on that immediately that, uh, in December, we were working already in the science division uh, trying to, to look for evidence in different databases, websites. And we started this crazy project in January 2020. So what was our role at this point was to um, the, um, the staff 
especially researchers, high level researchers needed require they needed real time information from scientific literature, uh, just to um, to inform daily decisions regarding the pandemic. So we were there, and they say, "Oh, let's go to see the library guys. They have databases. They have the knowledge." They have all subscriptions. They understand how to get the most from the different uh, resources we have. So we started doing that and it was like um, a task we've been given. And the original scope, as you can see from the slide was to, to find any published literature on this new, newly identified virus, which first appeared in Wuhan, China. So what we needed to do at the beginning, I remember, uh, as if, as it was yesterday, uh, nothing was in databases. Everything was published, well, only one, two, three articles. We needed to go and, and dig publishers' websites. And, and then little by little, we started to see some um, site databases. And the first report was a Word document with eight citations to be distributed to 12 people. Uh, so then, then it moved to a more complex task because it was daily and we thought it, it was going to last only a few months but we're still working on the database since January 2020. So we were then compiling the citations in a note seven days a week, long hours and um, shit. Um, looking for different citations, trying to identify this evidence in different in different resources. This, this is, these are some examples we were monitoring in those days. As I, as I, and as I mentioned before, we were distributing this word document daily to a selected team in WHO. The evidence we were collecting, we were sharing the same day as soon as possible to continue exploring and looking for solutions on this newly appeared virus. And some experts in the house were doing manual tagging and classification in this Word document. So I used to send it to them, they sent it back to me, and I sent it back to, to the team. So um, then this became very well known and some experts in-house started to join these 12 people and the team became, became bigger. But then external researchers wanted to have access to these bibliographies that we were doing daily. And we were sharing them in a repository in MS Teams, I remember, and we were looking for solutions uh, on how to better uh, share this using different platforms. So seven days a week, and then long, long, long hours, which were from Monday to Monday, nonstop. And I used to, I remember I used to work 16 hours or more, even Sundays. And I'll tell you a story about that before we implemented some of these uh, the duplication tools. So then we finally contacted the um, BRM team because we were having some internal solutions, in-house solutions, which were more or less corporate to try to publish these bibliographies. And we were um, using some technologies they had, and we used to post them in one of our web pages related to COVID-19. And since there was a big request on this, so we contacted BRME, who's the technical arm of the WHO, to help us find a solution. And the thing is that we were already working with them with um, another database, the Global Index Medicals, that they had implemented. So they reused that model, and we started having a real database, and it's been customized little by little with um, the entire team. So the WHO COVID-19 research database became a monster and it was born. And what you need for monsters is you need cookies or food to, uh, let's say, to feed them. So the database was being fed daily and I used to process lots of citations, thousands and thousands using EndNote and other tools. And look at the result now. We have more than 800,000 citations in around 70 languages, more or less. And we started searching, I say 100 because I don't remember how many, but there were a lot sources, which then we reduced to 50 and then now 
20 plus resources. We were doing daily updates seven days a week, then Monday to Friday and Tuesday to Saturday. And we were processing around 92,000 citations monthly. So the idea was to get them together, clean them, and then make them available in the um, WHO COVID-19 database, which was cumulative at this point. And over 25,000 citations were added to the database monthly. So you see how many duplicates we removed and, and the methods we were using. I'm going to tell you about that later on. And um, so how many people were benefiting from this database? 6,500 active users a day in 200 plus countries. And he started in a um, room, remember, with my, my friend Thomas Allen, benefiting only 12 people. And then it expanded to everybody in the world who were um, really worried and interested in, in working on, on helping fight this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. The thing was that we had thousands of duplicates being removed manually and semi-automatic. So we, we needed to explore new solutions to take care, to remove these duplicates and then for quality control. So we started also just to supplement some collaboration with partnerships and then trying, and we were asking at different meetings high level meetings or also less important, less um, high level meetings who could collaborate and people started to offer themselves to see if they could help. And you can see a list on the last, um, let's say uh, partner we have during the, um, in our list is RiskClick. So we heard about RiskClick. We received a message from Teresa Lee who's attending here and Latifa is working then. Hello to you also. <laughs> And they are at IARC, which is part of WHO also. They sent us an email saying that the risk click, it's, it was a good solution for the duplication. So um, having this big, big monster, we say, okay, let's go and explore that. In the meantime, we got a very important award, which is the Choice Award, because of the work in our team we have done. And it was the library, the American Library Association and they conferred this um, distinguished award to us, very prestigious because um, our work um, uh, about carrying out this, building this database uh, was excellent. And we ended up in their list and we never imagined that would have this recognition. So um, as you can see, this is the prize we got. We're proud of that, but our interest was to continue helping fight this pandemic. And we appreciate this also from the choice um, also. So we started to look into the future. You can see, uh, and at the beginning we were two, and then some other people joined us. And there was Kavita and also Tini, and then also Martha Nut, and then Tinashi, and other people, and other librarians who were helping us also, um, as you could see in the collaboration. And all of them uh, came into the scene to try and help us feed this monster. So uh, as, just to mention the deduplication um, efforts we were doing and solutions and quality control we were doing, we started using this model of um, the um, this um, very well-known librarian, Richard Brammer. Uh, and I remember Thomas giving me this, in this information at the beginning. We were using this just to to work with internal users and help them deduplicate. So I had to learn this and I was doing this for the entire database at the beginning using this method, deduplicating in EndNote desktop and with my eyes. And then I started using glasses because I had to do this very manually one by one by one, one by one, see also if it was the real duplicate or not. So I had to intervene at a manual level. And we moved that into, we moved on to um, using COVID and since the beginning, and we were relying on their uh, deduplication um, algorithm. They had an algorithm, but the, um, it was okay for systematic reviews that, that has improved, but for our needs, it was, we, we needed something better. We moved on to Distiller SR. They had a better solution. Our needs, they are complementary. And just a disclaimer, I'm not um, promoting any of these products because it's just sharing my experience and also for the benefit of the community. 
So uh, it was Sentinel first and Covidence and then Distiller and then the Biremi um, arm was, they were also applying some more, um, uh, they are called algorithms in house they have prepared. And also Severe, they came to help us a little bit with that. So I was spending, and my colleague also, Tini, because she was working in the, uh, dealing with this part of the uh, database, work of the database, this task, I started doing, it was eight to 10 hours. And then six hours, we were spending a lot of time with these tools already. So the future, we were looking for um, a solution also who could reduce, which could reduce the workforce implement used for this uh, to, to, to continue feeding this monster. So what happened then, um, we received this email from Therese, I remember, and it was in July, and it was in July, 2022. Uh, but it wasn't the ideal solution for us because it was more, uh, you know, um, the duplic was used more for, um, it was designed for systematic reviews and the duplication. The question was whether they could help us with this big database or not. So we went to this um, workshop uh, and then the result was that um, RiskClick became the present, as you can see here. Um, the information email we received from IARC, then we started conversations on the 29th of September. And this is because we were busy on other things. And then we started to explore that. And in October, we have the first meeting and you see the dates also. And in November, we started having the test accounts because this conversation was becoming more interesting and solutions uh, were really mm, appealing. And, and, and it was they were really interesting for us. And on the 5th of November, we started with our test accounts. And we did some tests, yeah, yeah, some tests at this point. And it took, it took a few days, also some days. And the thing is that we needed this uh, computational power to help us doing that. So RISC investigated the possibility and they could improve the performance with big data to reduce it from some days to three hours. So we had this process and then uh, we the test, this performance was tested by the WHO team. And we then communicated some requirements we had in addition to the deduplication and it was regarding uh, how to get results to share them with the um, BREME in order to be implemented and, implemented and also integrated into their workflow. So we could continue with the same workflow and the flexibility of um, the Duplic teams was, was really great. So on the 21st of February, 2023, we implemented the Duplic. And the reality is that from six hours, remember it was 10 or more, it became 45 minutes deduplicating um, daily updates against the entire database, which was already clean and also the quality was controlled and improved. And I remember before this, I was deduplicating uh, in my room and I had a little mattress in there because while the machine was doing the duplication, I was having a little nap and I was working at 10 o'clock in the evening and then waiting for the machine doing that. And then again, restart after 15 minutes from one step. And I used to work from 10 to 2 o'clock in the, in the morning. And then I had to restart the day after at 7 or, or so. And if this solution was before there, first, I wouldn't be using glasses as I do now. <laughs> and then I could have more time for research, for uh, having conversations with other people, and then having, why not, a coffee? Because I could see that this conversation started in at the end, also having coffee, because coffees are inspirational also for mental health, to, sh to spend time with your family. So anyways, from six hour or 10 in those times to 45 minutes is a real revolution for us. And now we can say that the WHO COVID-19 research database, a monster eats better quality food with different taste because lots of duplicates are removed thanks to this new solution that we have implemented. So this is the uh, experience, the, the, the story we wanted to share with you. 
And then uh, for technicalities, oh, if you have very technical questions, I'm not in the capacity yet because I was the one doing manual things in those times. And now I need to start um, learning how to use it. I could see how to use it. And I'm going to be trained on the 5th of April on real uh, stuff to see. And I already saw the power of it. Anyways, this is all and uh, over to you now. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much for the nice presentation. It was a really uh, nice uh, collaboration also for us. A lot of learning, a lot of experience. And then... Uh, I mean, the whole project started with a collaboration and also the new feature developed with a collaboration. And we would like to keep this uh, system and go always with a collaboration. Please, uh, if you have any idea or challenge, challenge us and we would be happy to collaborate with you and find the right solution uh, for your challenge. And this is uh, the mood. Uh, because the, for the sake of the time, uh, maybe first we go to the question uh, to answer the question and then uh, I will uh, show you the rest of the presentation because some people might uh, have to leave if you agree. Uh, yeah, I have the question here. Uh, the first question is, thank you very much uh, for the compliment. Are you able to prioritize your preferred order of the duplication? I would always prefer retain CDSR record over the PubMed reference. I would also prefer to prioritize Medline over PubMed content over Embase to make content acquisition easier. Uh, I can add, uh, say yes. This is, as I mentioned, with a, uh, with a colleague in Basel, we already did it and this is possible and then we can prioritize it based on your order you just tell uh, tell us your order we implement it and uh, send you um, uh, the customized solution the second question is when you import the deduplicated ris back into endnote do you lose the database groups i think this is the question to beatrice and doris Yes, this is correct. You lose the groups. Yeah. And then the question is, if you tag the database information in a custom field, will this information will be retained as it passes through the deduplic process? We yes. Yeah, this is, we test it also with a colleague from WHO. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we keep it in the in a custom field. We keep whatever that we have in a custom field. Can I just add something to the question before? Yeah, yes, you lose the groups, that's correct. But if you've done the database name change, you know, if you added the name of databases, you can rebuild them from, from there. You can just sort according to name of database in the EndNote library and then just make new groups because you can you can really rebuild them if you like. And then the other question is, uh, would that this uh, CF text affect the, the duplication process? About I recently. can't imagine, but I've not tested it. Mm -hmm. I think should not. Yeah. We can surely find that out yes. um, and, and then write to the, the answer in the Q&As. OK. Yes. The uh, name of database is not lost. If you want to uh, change it, it will be kept and it won't get lost. Yes, that was mm -hmm. just a chat question. Yeah. Uh, and then the other question, also curious whether deduplic strips information from fields. We have custom fields. Uh, this is, I think, the same. This is the same question. Uh, uh, I would like some clarification on a fee uh, versus free. Uh, I think uh, I, I will send, my colleague will send you the link of the, the website, then you can find all the information about the fee packages and uh, how it works there. And then if you have any question, you can contact our support team, we'll help you with that. 
Uh, then the other question, uh, is there any information available on how DeduClick performs compared to the other automated deduplication tools, Mendeley, SR, and semi-automated techniques using the same reference data set, especially in terms of positive and negative, uh, negative predictive values? Uh, I, Maybe Beatrice, you you can answer this question. Um, I haven't found any published um, uh, results comparing. DeduClick is quite young, but we have uh, we were invited to the Dutch uh, Dutch Dedup Day where they um, compare different uh, deduplication algorithm. They are still eleva uh, evaluating the results, and they will they plan to publish it then. Um, the comparison uh, towards um, uh, covidence, distiller, etc. We have not um, compared uh, those tools together. Maybe this should be a good uh, good input to to make it. What we have learned that they are a bit more strict in 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 um, the duplicating and not so conservative as as we um, try to be. But we have to um, plan. Uh, concrete uh, comparison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, please, uh, if you compare it, if you have some result, please also share it with us because we didn't do it. And then we are waiting also, as Beatrice mentioned, uh, from this uh, workshop that our colleague in uh, Netherlands did it. And of course, once we have it, we will publish the result and share it with you as well. Uh, then there is another uh, question. Uh, it's great that the content in a custom fields is retained. What about other fields? We use other fields that are not custom field, custom one, custom two, custom three in institution a specific way. I like uh, preservation of metadata. Is all metadata preserved? Uh, yes, all metadata preserved. Uh, even if you have it in a custom, then... Uh, um, um, the, the, it's also keep the, the data in a custom field as well. But I think Kavita is also here. If she's still here, I think she also tested with a custom field. And if she's here, she can uh, just unmute yourself and share your experience with us. I'm not sure because maybe it's late. Hi. Hi. Um... Hello, Kavita. <laughs> Hi, this is Kavita Kotari. I'm a consultant information specialist for the World Health Organization. Um, I did quite a lot of testing with uh, Deduclick, the prior version and the custom version that they made for us. Um, and my experience was that whatever metadata you fed into it was exported out as well. And there was no loss in metadata. This was a big concern for us. Um, so I did check this quite a bit. Um, but yeah, that's, that's as much as I can offer for now. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, one of our colleagues, I saw in the chat that, uh, they wrote that I compared with the manual and SRA, but it's only an experience of a case, but would be nice if you are still here, you share your experience with us. <laughs> Estefani? Okay. Good. Um, then any other question? If not, then I will move to the last part of the uh, presentation. Sorry, it took a little bit longer than uh, the plan, but Hope you can still stay with us. Are you here? Hello? No. Sorry? Can you hear me? Yes, can we can hear you. you. Here, here. Uh, sorry for my English. <laughs> I'm information specialist to Canary Island or health service. And I compare the data
we lose you sometimes if you can keep the microphone close to you then uh, i think that would be, yes please. i put in the chat no no, no it's okay. good that that's good that they continue i think yes. this is um i compare the data when i make a um, systematic search and i put the results in the chat box and mm -hmm. uh, now uh, I realized that uh, when I do the the manual the duplication, <laughs> I make uh, errors. Um, <laughs> you know. uh, but uh, when I I make the the process with the the uh, tool, I me I found. Any, I I think I found any references that are a, but it's not a, a perfect the duplicate, but it's the same author that publish publish the the information two times. Uh, in two source, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's the same information, and this is the um, the record that uh, really is the same. But it's normal that the the duplicate don't uh, cap, catch it. Yeah, just to uh, just coming back to the result that, that, that if we are, I mean, this is the algorithm is unsure, this is the same because the DOI is different or some really metadata is different, we keep it and this is this 0.5% duplicate yeah. that we sacrifice to go with a conservative approach to have it for the high precision. Okay, thank you. Thank and you. It, congrats yeah. for the tool is a new life for me <laughs> <laughs> because it's a very very hard work when you have uh, to do the all uh, steps and the final steps is so so uh, for the mind <laughs> thank you very much for sharing your experience i think kavita you have a question Yes, if correct, do you want to? Yeah, uh, no, not a not a question. I wanted to echo what uh, Estefania was saying. Um, I did some manual checks as well, um, compared to you know manual deduplications that I had done in EndNote earlier, um, and I found the same thing that um, I found some errors that I had made during the manual deduplication when I compared it to what the deduplicate tool did. And of course, you know, when the metadata is actually different, like a different journal, uh, Deduple will not identify this as a duplicate. Um, but I think that makes a lot of sense because yeah. only by comparing at full text, only by comparing at full text, you would be able to know that difference, even, um, you know, through human intervention. So when you feed the, the machine Deduplic, only the metadata that's in the references, it's only going to compare that and give you the result. So I was really happy when I did the manual tests uh, compared to my old uh, manual de uh, deduplications. And uh, the numbers were similar also, which is important because you know it has that accuracy, um, but also it also removes a similar number of uh, dedupl uh, deduplicates um, minus plus the errors that a human might make. Yeah, over. Thank you very much for sharing your experience. Uh, for the sake of the time, I briefly just show you, I mean, the, the, the functionality, how you can also dedu up and deduplicate your database is the same approach uh, than the update search deduplication. You create a project, but just instead of the small size, you need to select the big size. And then this is the same process. Once you do the initial one, then for any new update, you can just select uh, the project here and then uh, up upload your updated file. Uh, this is the 
the only difference between the, the systematic review or small size and big databases. And big databases, of course, it takes more times. For example, for WHO COVID-19 database, as they mentioned, it takes three hours to do that, while the, the file less than 100,000 citation, it's usually fast and between two to two, three minutes. And the last part that I would like to show you is that uh, the, the management tool behind that, you have a management tool as an admin of your organization, you have access to the management tool to manage the user of your organization. You have a dashboard, you can see your activity, how many users do you have, which packages you have, how many you have done, how many remained, who did that, and the name of the file and the active user you have here. You can create the user, oh, sorry. <laughs> I need to log in again, just a second. Okay, good. Then uh, you can create a um, user by yourself here by just click plus, then you can add name, position, email, and then you can allocate some deduplication to your colleagues. And also since we have a different services on our platform and we are creating more services, then you can select which service that you want to give them access if it's only but if you have a right or do you buy dedu click you only see dedu click but if you have other solution then you can you can see the other solution and um, you can go to the subscription here you can buy the subscription the plan that you want and then um, directly you don't need for the first time you need to contact our support team to implement this for you but that as an admin for the future you can buy the plan and then you can even pay here directly to see your invoice you can print your invoice you can pay with a credit card or bank transfer and all is possible with the management tool and with that uh the last slide that i want to show you sorry that took a little bit longer than expected it was a really nice discussion uh, that uh, you know by the prisma s that we need to uh, also report or cite the method that we use for our deduplication because it's a scientific process that we need to cite in our uh, publication and on our website and also panel you see the the suggested wording that you can use for citation and then you can cite our paper in your uh, method and uh, we will be in the uh, in these events this year uh, in the Medical Library Association in Detroit from May 17 to 19 in the boot number 627 in a uh, Hill uh, in uh, Trondenheim from the June 12 to 16. The boot number is still not assigned, but we will tell you where we will be. And the IFLA General Conference Rotterdam from the August 21 to 25. And uh, we will inform you about the boot number. If you are attending any of these uh, conferences, please come to our booth to pick up your Swiss chocolate uh, and enjoy your uh, Swiss chocolate and uh, with the coffee as well, of course. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much for your time. And thank you everybody for this nice discussion.